On this episode of Precalculus with Nacho Mama's Math, we are working on graphing with transformations. In this video, I will walk you through my favorite way of graphing with transformations, but as always, there are certainly many different valid strategies. First, let's get into what we're doing and why we're doing it. Graphing with transformations is a way of graphing functions that are similar to certain easily recognizable functions. You may wonder why we don't use a t-chart and come up with random points. It's a valid strategy if you're not sure what you're graphing, but the likelihood of you coming up with all of the relevant points and behavior of a function is pretty slim. For instance, even if you knew you were graphing a parabola, the chance of you randomly guessing where the vertex is, is small. And without the vertex of a parabola, the sketch really isn't complete. Let's look at some examples of functions that we would graph using transformations. First, g of x equals negative 3 times x minus 2 squared plus 1. We can tell from the x squared that we have a parabola of some sort. Next, we have g of x equals 2 over x plus 3 minus 1, which is a variation of 1 over x because of where that x is located. Next, g of x equals log base 2 of x minus 2 minus 3. We see that's a variation of log base 2 of x. And next, g of x equals negative one-third square root of 2x minus 1 minus 1, which is a variation of the square root of x. Lastly, e to the power of 2x plus 1, which is a variation of y equals e to the x. Hopefully, if you pause and look at the formulas, you can see how we are drawing the comparisons between them. The strategy of graphing with transformations is to start with the basic graphs we know, like y equals x squared, and apply transformations to that graph until we have the graph we are looking for, like in our first example, g of x equals negative 3 times x minus 2 squared plus 1. Obviously, this requires having a clear mental picture of the basic functions, more commonly known as the parent functions. Let's look at them and get them in our mind's eye. If you're feeling saucy, you can pause the video here and see if you can imagine or deduce what the following six basic parent functions look like. So let's go over what the most important aspects of these graphs are. The first curve is a parabola. It has what we call a vertex at zero, zero, and that's an important point to have on a sketch. Next, we have y equals one over x, which has two asymptotes that computers never emphasize at x equals zero and y equals zero. When we sketch graphs by hand, we emphasize the asymptotes. Next, we have the graph of the square root of x. It has what I call a tail end at zero, zero, which is important to emphasize and include in any sketch. Next, we have the graph of the absolute value of x. It has a vertex at zero, zero, which should always be emphasized. Our last two functions are parent functions that many pre-calculus textbooks don't always talk about when they introduce graphing with transformations. I personally like to start with them, so I'm going to include them in this video. The graph of y equals log base b of x is called a logarithmic function and it has base b. This is a general logarithm and when you graph it, little b here will be a positive number that's fixed. It has an asymptote at x equals zero regardless of what b is. You may remember from intermediate algebra that logarithmic functions are related to exponential functions, such as our next function, y equals b to the power of x. We will explore this relationship in a separate video. For now, we just recognize that y equals b to the power of x has an asymptote at y equals zero and it is a reflection of the logarithmic curve across the line y equals x. Those are our six parent functions. I recommend that you commit these functions to memory and get very comfortable working with their equations. You may want to pause the video and copy these graphs down. Next, let's talk about what transformations of a graph look like visually. A transformation is a movement of the graph of the parent function. They include shifts, which is moving left, right, or up and down, reflections, which are flipping the graph across an axis, and lastly, shrinking or stretching. Let's look at some of these applied to the graph of y equals absolute value of x. Here's our parent. 
Let's look at a side-by-side -side of the transformations applied to the formula and the resulting picture. First, we have a right shift of three units. Let's spotlight the transformed function formula. Now let's see what the graph looks like. Next, we have a horizontal reflection, i.e. a reflection across the y-axis. Looking at the function formula, you see a factor of negative one on the x. Notice how there's no change to the absolute value graph? That's because it's already symmetric across the y-axis. It was still reflected, we just can't see the difference for this particular function. Next, let's look at the horizontal shrink. Notice how there's a factor of two applied to the x? That's coding for a shrink. See how it made it skinnier? The factor of two had the effect of shrinking the absolute value function as if it were pushing on both sides of the function. Next, let's look at a vertical shrink. See how we are multiplying the formula by one third? This will have the effect of shrinking the formula vertically. See how it looks flattened? So we see that a vertical shrink has the effect of squashing the absolute value parent down. We looked at shrinks of both types. So a stretch would be the arrows moving in the opposite direction on the parent. Let's get a comprehensive list of our transformations and how they will show up in the formula. The big transformation theorem says that if f of x is your parent function, then the transform function will be g of x equals a times f of b of x minus h plus k. Each of these letters represent one of the types of transformations, and the order they would be applied with this formula is h, b, a, k. My favorite way to remember this is Huge bacon strips are killer, both because of the deliciousness and coronary disease that you would probably get if you ate bacon as your staple food. Here's our comprehensive chart that keeps track of each transformation and how to apply it to the coordinates of the parent function. First, H. H codes for horizontal shift. If you have a negative H value, that's a left shift. If you have a positive H value, that's a right shift. To transform the coordinates of a point on the parent, we add h to the x-coordinate. Pay attention to the minus in the theorem. The true h value is actually the opposite sign of what you see in the formula. We will look at that in our examples. Moving on for now. Next, b. b is the horizontal scaling slash reflecting. If b is negative, that codes for a reflection across the y-axis. Now, disregard the sign of b. If b is a fraction between 0 and 1, then that's a horizontal stretch. If b is a number bigger than 1, then that's a horizontal shrink. To transform the points, we take the x-coordinate and divide by b. Next, the a value. The a codes for a vertical reflection and scale. If a is negative, that's a reflection across the x-axis. Disregard the sign of a now. If you disregard the sign, the number part of a is bigger than 1, means it's a vertical stretch. If it is a fraction between 0 and 1, then that's a vertical shrink. To transform the coordinates of points on the parent, you multiply the y-coordinate by a. Lastly, we apply the k transformation, which is a vertical shift. A positive k is an upshift, and a negative k is a downshift. To apply this to the coordinates of points on the parent, we add k to the y-coordinate. Before we move on, Notice that each step only affects either the x or y coordinate, not both. How it's going to go is we take points on our parent function and apply each of these transformations one at a time. H, B, A, then K. Huge bacon strips are killer. Let's see how they show up within the formulas of our parent function. Let's list the formulas of the transformed functions. The absolute value function the square root function, a polynomial function of any general power n, a rational function, a logarithmic function, an exponential function. Notice that the little b is the base for logs and exponentials and it's not related to the big b. Pause and really look at where these transformations show up. Moving into our examples now, we are going to practice graphing with transformations. 
Example 1. We want to graph the transformed function g of x equals negative a half times the absolute value of 2x plus 1 minus 3. Pause the video and write out what the a, b, h, and k are. Remember you can rewind the video to see where those letters show up for an absolute value function. And we are back. You should get a equals negative a half, b equals 2, h equals negative 1, and k equals negative 3. Remember how the h is the opposite sign of what you see? Now let's write out the parent function formula. This one looks like an absolute value function, so the parent is an absolute value function. We start out with points on our parent function, making sure to include that vertex at 0, 0. So our points on the parent are negative 1, 1, 0, 0, and 1, 1. Let's star our vertex point, since wherever that point goes is our vertex each step. So our first transformation step is h. Remember that we take the x-coordinates and subtract 1. And so our x-coordinates will be negative 2, negative 1, and 0. The y-coordinates stay unchanged. Next, we have b. We do x divided by b, so we do x over 2 in this example. And that produces the x-coordinates negative 1, negative 1 half, and 0. Again, the y-coordinates are unchanged. Next, we have a. A is negative a half, so we will do y times negative a half. That gives us new y coordinates of negative a half, zero, and negative a half, and the x coordinates stay unchanged. Next we do k. We have k equals negative three, a downshift. So we take the y coordinates and subtract three, which gives us new y's of negative 3.5, negative three, and negative 3.5. And this is our final coordinates of our transform function. So now we have our final t-chart of points. Let's graph them. Negative 1, negative 3.5, and 0, negative 3.5 are the points on our branches. And because it came from the vertex, negative 1 half, negative 3 will be the new vertex. And then we connect them in the shape of an absolute value. Let's make sure our picture makes sense conceptually. With our h, b, a, k as they were, we should have done a left shift of 1 followed by a horizontal shrink of 2 followed by a vertical shrink and reflection followed by a downshift. If you are a visual person, you may be able to imagine each step as it happens. And let's check our answer and compare to the parent function. Note that I don't require my students to graph the parent, but all teachers are different, so you should ask your teacher. On to example 2. Pause the video, study the formula of the transform function 3 square root of negative x plus 1 minus 1 and write out the values for a, b, h, and k. Also see if you can identify the parent function. And we get a equals 3, b equals negative 1, h equals negative 1, and k equals negative 1. Our parent is the square root of x. When we choose points on the parent function, we want to think about points on square root of x. So let's do x equals 0, 1, and 4, since those are easy to square root. We don't want to choose negatives because we can't square root negatives. These points are totally your choice, but remember you have to choose the tail end, 0, 0, and keep track of where it goes. Now we are ready to apply our transformations. Try to pause the video and see if you can finish the problem. You can skip forward to to see what finished t-chart and graph should look like if you're feeling saucy. Otherwise, watch through for an explanation. So we start with h, x coordinates minus one. Then we move on to b, x coordinates divided by negative one. Next a, y coordinates times three. Last k, y coordinates minus one. And we get the final points, one, negative one, zero, two, and negative three, five. Our new tail end is 1, negative 1. So let's graph that. And let's check our answer and think about these transformations. We did a left shift, followed by a reflection across the y-axis, followed by a vertical stretch, followed by a shift down one unit. Looks good. Notice the computers suck in the sense that they don't generally default to drawing arrows on most graphing pro programs. But we need to do that to emphasize on our sketches what continues and what ends. 
At this point in the video, we are going to move into an example that deals with logarithmic functions. We will briefly review what a logarithmic function is, but for a full review, you will want to check out my video on exponentials and logarithms if you don't remember them from intermediate algebra. On to example three. For this example, we are looking at a logarithmic function. g of x equals negative log base two of two x minus two. Pause the video and write out the values for a, b, h, and k. Also see if you can identify the parent function. This one's a logarithm, but make sure you choose the right base for your parent. And we get a equals negative one, b equals two, h equals zero, and k equals negative two. h is zero because we didn't add or subtract anything to the two x. Our parent is log base two of x. And let's highlight how we can see the base. When we choose points on the parent function, we want to think about points on log base two of x. Remember that seeing a log is being asked what power? What you see inside the log is being viewed as a power of the base, in this case two. So when we choose our x values, we want to think about easy powers of two, such as a half, one, and two. We also want to include the fact that the logarithm function has an asymptote and see where that asymptote goes with the transformations. Remember the asymptote is at x equals zero and that's a line, so we will just cross out the y coordinate. Now let's compute these logarithms. When we take log base two of a half, we are asking the question, what power do we raise the two to get one half? That would be the power of negative one. Go ahead and pause and do the other two. You should get zero and one respectively. Now we are ready to apply our transformations. Try to pause the video and see if you can finish the problem. You can skip forward too to see what the finished t-chart and graph should look like. Otherwise, watch through for an explanation. So we start with h equals zero. No shift, so the points don't change. Then we move on to b, x coordinates divided by two. Next, a equals negative one. Y coordinates get multiplied by negative one. Last, k, y coordinates minus two. And we get the final points, a quarter negative one, a half negative two, and one negative three. Let's look at where the asymptote goes. Sometimes it's super obvious from the points you get at the end, but I like to apply the transformations to the asymptote just to make sure. Since our asymptote is x equals zero, only the b transformation should change it. But zero divided by two is still zero, so the asymptote doesn't shift. Sketching the graph and the asymptote now. There we go. And let's check our answer and think about those transformations. Looks good. And like I was saying earlier, asymptotes are never emphasized on computers as a default, but when we sketch our curves by hand, we include and emphasize any asymptotes. On to our last example. For our final example, we see we are dealing with g of x equals three x cubed minus five. Do your best to identify a, b, h, and k and the parent function and come back when you're done. You should get a equals one, b equals three, h equals zero, k equals negative five. The parent is a polynomial of degree three called a cubic. Y equals x cubed, that is. How do we know it's a cubic versus some other polynomial? The power that x is being raised to, let's highlight it. The points on the parent are negative one, negative one, zero, zero, and one, one. But the shape is not a line. You need to think about what a cubic looks like, which may take some refreshing if it's been a while since you worked with polynomials. Here's a speedy sketch of the parent. Okay, so we know that the curvature changes at zero, zero from concave down, like a frowny face, to concave up, like a smiley face. Keeping that in mind, since our final graph will have the same behavior at wherever that zero, zero point goes. Now you're ready to complete this problem. Pause the video and see if you can get it. Did you get the final points, negative a third, negative six, zero, negative five, and a third, negative four? Because A and H weren't existent here, we really only had the B and K transformations. Since zero, zero goes to the point zero, negative five, we preserve that inflection point where the curvature changes, and we're done. Let's take a look at the side-by-side -side of the transformed and the original function. And just pointing out that not all of our parent functions have asymptotes. 
Polynomials do not have asymptotic behavior, even though they grow with steep incline. Well, I hate to say it, but that's all I have for you today, folks. Now you can curve sketch with the best of them. See you guys next time.